Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and this is iPhone 12 Pro. It comes in four different colors this year, graphite, which replaces space gray, silver, gold, and this all new Pacific blue. Now it also comes in at $999, but for 128 gigabytes of storage to start, 1099 for 256 gigabytes and then 1299 for 512 gigabytes of storage. This is the 512 gigabyte Pacific Blue iPhone 12 Pro. So let's go ahead and unbox it and take a look at it. So here is the iPhone 12 Pro. You can see the box here. It has a colored logo. And just like I showed in the iPhone 12 video, the box is very similar sized. So it's about two thirds the size of an iPhone SE box or the current ones because it doesn't include a charger. Now let's go ahead and open it up. We'll take the top off here. And this is, like I said before, the Pacific Blue iPhone 12 Pro. So I'll set this aside just for a moment. Now inside the box, we have our USB-C to lightning cable. So as you can see here, it's our USB-C to lightning. And then also we've got some documentation and that's about it in a smaller envelope or, or pamphlet size. So we've got a SIM card ejector tool that's included. And then we have a little information about warranty and things like that. And then we have a single Apple sticker. It's a single white Apple sticker. Again, like I mentioned before, I would love to see them match the actual colors of the iPhone. Now let's set the box aside and take a closer look at the phone itself. Now the phone doesn't have any wrapper on it other than this piece of paper on the front display. So let's go ahead and take that off. And you can see here, it's the same display and the exact same size as the iPhone 12. I'll take a look at that together in just a moment. Now this comes in at 6.66 ounces or 189 grams. So it's heavier than the iPhone 12 because it's got stainless steel around the outside edge. It's surgical stainless steel, according to Apple. So it's a nice blue color with a matte finish on the back, which I really like. And let's go around the outside edge. Now on the right hand side, just like we've always had. We have our, our power sleep wake button. And then this little cutout here is for the millimeter wave 5G antenna that we have in the US only. Now you may have the cutout on your phone, but it's only turned on in the US. Then we have an antenna line. On the top of the device, we have another antenna line that curves around to the side here. Now on the left hand side, we have a silent switch along with volume buttons. And then we have a SIM card tray and then another antenna line. And then on the bottom, just like you'd expect microphone speaker and lightning port connector. And as you can see already, just from touching this, this outside rim is a fingerprint magnet, but the back is not. So I would have liked to see the matte finish on the side, but that's fine for now, but let's talk about what it looks like compared to the other sizes of phones. And then we'll go around and talk about the specs and everything else. So here is the iPhone 12. So you can see the blues are very different. It's a very vibrant blue that has a lot of fingerprints on it, but we have that matte band on the side. They're the exact same size. They fit the exact same cases, which I'll show you a little bit later. And everything is the same other than of course the cameras and a few other specs. Now compared to the 11 pro, you can see here, I have the midnight green 11 pro. They are about the same weight. Maybe the 12 pro is a little bit lighter. I'd have to look up the specs, but they're very similar that way. If we take a look at the top here, you can see the top is very similar as far as the width. It's very close from as far as that width goes and just feels a little bit thinner with the 12 pro. So basically the same, of course, we have the notch and everything else. And then finally compared with the 11 pro max, just to give you a general idea until I can get the 12 pro max. So it's definitely a difference in size there. There's a huge difference in its overall size. So you can see here, the width is much narrower and the height is much less as well. Now, as far as the overall specs, of course, inside we have the all new a 14 CPU and what I believe to be six gigabytes of Ram. We'll check that a little bit later. And then of course, with the display, let's go ahead and turn it on. We'll give it just a moment, but this is a 6.1 inch display. It's the same display or basically the same specs as we have with the iPhone 12. So it's 6.1 inches. It's 2532 by 1170. 
with 460 pixels per inch. It's Apple's OLED Super Retina XDR display. And you can see it does have the notch like you would expect at this point until they figure out a way to make it smaller with Face ID. It's never really bothered me personally, but it may bother some people. Now, of course, this has 5G with millimeter wave. I'll be putting my SIM card in here and doing a speed test a little bit later. And then let's talk about the cameras for a moment. Now on the back, one of the advantages of the 12 Pro is its LiDAR sensor. This helps with augmented reality and even autofocus in dark situations when you're at night. And then we have three different cameras. We have an ultra wide F2.4 aperture with 120 degree field of view. We have a wide F1.6 aperture, and that's very similar to what we have in the iPhone 12, which lets in a little bit more light. And then we have a telephoto F2.0 aperture, but it has 2x optical zoom and then 4x sort of zoom range, probably punching into the sensor on the actual phone itself or into the camera. Now it also has night mode with portrait mode, which is really nice. And then of course on the back, they all record in 4k 60. They have Dolby vision HDR as well. And Apple pro raw is coming later this year. They record in 10 bit HDR, which I think is really impressive. Now let's flip this over. And the forward facing camera is very similar to the iPhone 12. It's a 12 megapixel true depth camera with an F 2.2 aperture. Again, it can record in 4k 60. Now on the back of this, we have MagSafe. It's its new way of charging wirelessly. With this magnet paper, you can see here, you can see with the magnet paper, there's the speaker and microphone. And then this ring in the middle, as I move the magnet paper around, the ring in the middle is for MagSafe. And we'll take a closer look at some of that later, but that allows you to fast charge up to 15 Watts. And you can hear there's a different sound and it adheres pretty tightly. You can actually jiggle this around. It's not going to drop. Although I wouldn't throw it, it might drop that way. Now also this has what should be an all day battery, but 5g may affect that. Again, we'll talk a little bit more about 5g later on. And then it's IP 68 rated, but it has a better rating of a maximum depth of six meters up to 30 minutes, which is really impressive. Now let's go ahead and set this up. Let's go back here. Now I did the initial setup. I need to put in the password of my iPhone 11 pro max. Once you put in the password, it will start setting it up and it says finish on the new phone. So I'll set the iPhone 11 pro max aside. Now it may take a few minutes to activate your phone. You can put in your SIM card at any time, but what this does is bring over all the information such as your Wi-Fi network and other settings as well. So it's really nice that they've got that just an easy way to move that over. And of course I've shown that in other videos before as well. Now it wants me to set up face ID. I'll hit continue and get started. And you can see it grabs onto my face. Just move it around like that. Hit continue. And now my face is registered for face ID. We'll move on to the next step. So we'll hit continue. And then it says setting up your Apple ID. Next, we have to agree to the terms and services or terms and conditions. Now at this point, it's asking me if I want to restore from an iCloud backup or transfer apps and data. I'm just going to say don't transfer for now so we can get to the main home screen. Now it's saying, do you want to bring over, over settings from your other iPhone? I'll just go ahead and hit continue. And then it's asking me if I want to keep my iPhone up to date. Now there is no option to opt out of this. You'll have to do it a little bit later. So before there used to be an option for that, I don't see it on this one. And then it wants me to set up Apple pay. I'll set that up later. And then it says improve Siri and dictation. So you can share audio recordings or hit not now. And then also share with app developers, the analytics. Then the next step is display zoom. We'll go ahead and hit continue. And it says, welcome to iPhone. And so it says no SIM card installed. I'll install that in just a moment, but let's go ahead and sure. I'll use this one for my location. We'll go ahead and hit settings and you can see now it's set up. We'll go to general. And then about, and we'll want, we want to take a look at what the actual version is pre-installed. You can see the pre-installed version is iOS 14.1, which is pretty expected. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the settings for cameras and things like that. So this has some pretty impressive settings for camera. So we'll go into camera and the phone is getting a little warm, doing a bunch of background activity, syncing iCloud and things like that. I always like to turn on grid for the camera but you can record video. You can see up to 60 frames per second. I'll pick 30 for now. And 
you can lock the camera. And then also if we go down to, well, there's smart HDR and then under our video settings, you have an option for the HDR video. If you don't want Dolby vision, HDR 10 bit, you don't have to have it. You can just turn it off. So it's up to you what you want to do. And in editing some of the video with the iPhone 12, the footage is very vibrant and is actually in HLG HDR when you're actually trying to edit it. So now let's take a look at the camera. We'll go to the camera. It says new quick take video, hit continue and you can see we have the same sort of buttons we have on the 11 pro and 11 pro max we have our ultra wide here we have 2x we have one and that's the normal camera if we go over to video again we've got normal settings for hdr and everything else so just like i did in the last video let's go ahead and take a video capture of what we see here so we're recording from the iphone 12 pro and hopefully the video is pretty good and so we go up there's the Pro Display XDR, go back down to the iPhone 12 Pro box, and that's it. Now let's spin this around here, and let's go ahead and hit record. So now I'm recording with the iPhone 12 Pro front-facing camera, so hopefully this footage is good right out of the camera. Of course, I won't edit it for the video, I'll just put it in the timeline and then adjust the brightness. So I may have to do that. And so those are the cameras. Now I'll end the video recording with the back camera of this. So you can hear the microphones and everything else as though you were recording someone else. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the Ram and also a couple other things such as 5g, but I need to install the app. So let me do that now. So let's go ahead and install my SIM card here, pop the SIM card tray open. There we go. Grab my SIM card and put it in place. Now I use T-Mobile, so I'll have T-Mobile 5G here and we'll put that in place. There we go. I'll give it a moment to activate. Now, while we're waiting for everything to set up there, let's go into settings and take a look at what wallpapers we have since this has the pro wallpaper on it. So we'll go here and under stills, nothing really special there, but under live, we've got four different wallpapers. So we've got this dark blue, so we'll set this one wait for it here. And you've got three different others. You have gold and graphite and silver, it looks like. So if we go home, you can see it. It's very dark, but looks great on this display. If I switch over to, well, let me go over to dark mode here. So with dark mode on, they look pretty good. And we'll go back home and you can see it with dark mode. Now let's see how much RAM this has, and then we'll check 5G speed. So if we go into Geekbench 5 here, you can see it has 5.60 gigabytes or six gigabytes of RAM, just like it was expected to have. And it's running at the same 2.99 gigahertz with the A14 Bionic as the iPhone 12. Now let's go into speed test and we'll set it up here. And you can see I'm on Wi-Fi, so let's get off of Wi-Fi. Now we're on 5G. You can see I have two bars here. We'll hit go. And now this will ramp to 5G or back to 4G LTE, depending on if it's at an advantage or not. So you'll see we're hitting, well, I hit 135 megabits per second down. Give it just a moment and we'll see what it does for upload. There we go. That's pretty good where I'm at. So it's getting to about 10, 11 megabits per second upload. I've seen it hit 14 where I'm at, but of course you can do much more with that if you're, you've got better signal and if you have millimeter wave, it will be better. So I got 114 down by 11.6 up. And then if I had millimeter wave that would come into play and I would get gigabit speeds. But in the United States, it's mostly just Verizon that has that. Now, as far as 5g settings, if we go into the phone, go into cellular, now within the cellular data options, you have 5G auto set as default. Now it will switch based on need to try and save you the most power, but you do have the option to turn it on or switch back to LTE full time. Also under data mode, you have allow more data on 5G standard or low data mode. So those are options within the phone as well. So that may or may not help the battery depending on what it's doing. Apple should be managing that by themselves. So battery is about the same as the iPhone 11 Pro, but it may get worse battery. Some are saying one to two hours worse depending on normal use. So it really just depends on what you're doing. Now MagSafe is included, like I said before, but it's not only for charging, it does some interesting things with cases. So Apple's actually using a magnetometer and NFC to recognize the devices that are connected to it. So here is the plum case, and this will fit the iPhone 12 or 12 pro. So let's lock the display and then we'll put this, this on and you'll see it shows up as plum when it connects the, to the case. It's actually using that NFC in the back to do that. Now, if we take the case off and 
Again, let's turn the display off. We'll put on the deep navy case, connects, and it shows you the navy color. So it knows that it's connected to this case. Now, of course, you can charge through it, like I said, and the magnets hold on really tight, especially with this case, because I think it's doubling the power of the magnet. So I think it's really on there. So you just pop this off like that. We'll take the case off. And these cases are great because they protect the bottom this time too. So if you haven't seen that, they protect the bottom of the phone now. So now we have MagSafe to quick charge at 15 watts and 7.5 on a regular charger. So if you want to use a normal charger, wireless charger, you still can. Of course, you can use the lightning adapter as well, but you'll need another charger of some sort. You'll have to pick one up. Now, when you connect MagSafe, there's this really nice animation. So we'll connect it and flip it over and you'll see it shows the actual charge state. Now it has a nice sound to it too. Let me see if you can hear that. And so you know it's charging. So it's a really nice little animation to go along with it. Now, as far as the display is concerned, it looks fantastic, has great viewing angles. And one advantage it has over the other one, as far as the iPhone 12 is concerned, is it can go up to 800 nits of max brightness and then 1200 nits when viewing HDR. The other one can do 1200 nits, but it's not as bright just in everyday use. Now it also has that ceramic shield on it. So hopefully it's more scratch resistant, but Apple says it's four times more drop resistant or shatter resistant. So that should be pretty interesting. And then of course, HDR video and everything else. Now, along with iPhone 12 and any other iPhone that actually uses an OLED display, it uses PWM or pulse width modulation to control the screen brightness. As you adjust the screen, it's actually flashing the screen faster or slower, depending on how bright it is. And so let me show you what this looks like compared to an iPhone 11 with an LCD display that doesn't do it. So as you can see side by side, the iPhone 12 pro is actually flashing. Now this is fast enough that you can't see it with your normal eyes. No one can actually see it, but it does cause headaches for some people. So it could be a concern. The 11 pro and the 11 pro max really were fast enough that they didn't bother my eyes though. So with previous generations, they did, but this one should be plenty fast so far. It's not bothering my eyes. Now, the other thing is the iPhone 12 pro has stereo speakers, just like the other iPhones. So you have one on the bottom and then one on the top. And so far they sound really clear and loud. So let me move my microphone so you can actually hear it. And I'll show you using my watch what the actual decibels are so you can hear or see how loud it goes. iPhone 12 Pro front facing camera. So hopefully this footage is good right out of the camera. Of course, I won't edit it for the video. I'll just put it in the timeline and then adjust the brightness. So I may have to do that with the iPhone 12 Pro front facing camera. So hopefully this footage is good right out of the camera. Of course, I won't edit it for the video. I'll just put it in the timeline and then adjust the brightness. So I may have to do that. So in that initial test compared to the 11 Pro Max, the 12 Pro definitely sounds clearer, at least to my ears. Now, I absolutely love this squared off edge. In fact, I've been waiting for this since the iPhone 5S. I've always preferred the squared off edges. And one thing is the display doesn't stick out past the frame anymore. So you'll see that on the front and the back glass as well. It's very, very flat. So it's something that feels a little bit different in your hand. It's a little bit more premium, I think, and less slippery to me because it, it's not rounded. Now that's something that I prefer. Not everyone will like that, of course, but I really like this blue, but I'll have to see the other colors to determine which one I'll pick up for myself later on. So that's it for iPhone 12 Pro. Of course, I'll have to use it for a few days or a week before I do a full review and give my thoughts on it. But let me know what you think of the rear camera. I'm recording straight out of the rear camera, no external microphone or anything, and the air conditioner's on, so it may be bad, it may be great. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on the wallpaper that's on this box or on the phone and on the 11 Pro Max, of course, I'll link all of that in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.